hopefully prime wins and maybe we can jump over and catch one of their games today. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I think ideally here we want to at least uh, get to see the Korean team in action and especially against Ventus, where I mean, if the Korean team is really strong, then uh, in Luxury Watch, we would see uh, perhaps a really good game between them and Ventus. But ideally, we do want to go see the round of eight between Prime and Mixup, because that could really be a coming of age story for Prime. I mean, if Prime is able to take out Mixup in the round of eight, not only do I think they would unseat uh, Mixup for uh, number three in North America based on our rankings, but I mean, that'd just be a great story for Prime in general because they've been secretly sort of leveling up in the background and all the rest. So I think that'd be a great game to watch just in general. Right. And we are now in the map draft. Ventus comes out, bans Temple of Anubis. Uh, Team Luxury Watch bans out Dorado right away. Yeah, so Luxury Watch uh, immediately taking out one of the payload maps. And, you know, maybe this is a case where they don't want to play payload. They don't want to run into the NAEU meta and perhaps have meta of their own for whether it be King of the Hill or... Uh, capture points. That being said, Temple Nubus and Volskaya both being taken up by Ventus. So if they did have their designs and capture points, it might not happen. In well, fact, they take out Hamura themselves. So no, but you bring up an excellent point, though, is that we have no idea what the meta looks like from Korea. Right. I mean, it could be completely different. Uh, you see in different games, different teams preferred. I, I think I remember uh, early on in HOTS, like MVP Black coming in, was running some really interesting stuff. And so we really don't have any idea what kind of composition or heroes they prefer on Team Luxury Watch. Yeah, I think Luxury Walks here, more than anything else, it just seems like they don't like Dorado because their bands are looking suspiciously like your average North American EU bands here. They're taking out capture point maps, they're taking out Lijong Tower and uh, all the rest. So. Right, which, which is strange because I always felt that Dorado was a uh, map that most people just had no strong feeling on one way or the other in a lot of cases. It's definitely a first to see team uh, specifically ban out Dorado immediately. King's Row now banned out too. So we are down to four. It's Numbani. Well, never mind. There goes the Down Paul. goes the Paul. So this will be a all payload series, even if we go to three games. The map pool will be Numbani, Hollywood, and Gibraltar. And now teams ban the side the first map. And going off previous experience, I would say we're more likely to go Numbani, but who knows what Luxury Watch will prefer here. We've seen a lot more Gibraltar, though. I mean, in, in the past few weeks, it seems like, you know, Numbani has fallen a little bit out of favor. Still one of the top maps we see a lot, but we've seen much more Gibraltar than we did maybe three or four weeks ago, especially. We definitely have. So now we wait uh, anxiously. See, will it be Numbani? Will it be Watchpoint clock. Gibraltar? Come on, clock. Go, banana. We are going to go, Numbani. Going, going to Numbani. All right. So uh, the Numbani uh, pick holds true in the end. Which should be really interesting because Numbani kind of has a set meta, at least on defense anyway. You, even teams like IDDQD, who will, who will prefer the, the so-called god comp, uh, will run a very standardish defense on here. Something Someone's going to hold the top ledge. Generally, you're going to see a McCree in a lot of plays. So uh, it, we'll, we'll see what Luxury Watch pulls out here, but I'm excited to get into this. Uh, I was not able to watch everything Ventus did this morning, but all, by all accounts, they looked very, very good. They beat some top European teams. They're on a roll even in just today so a uh, great match coming your way yeah definitely and of course uh, Ventus they are coming up in our rankings Let's see what is their exact rank in our rankings we can find that out before we start here they are a uh, number 15 so they're on the way up though especially with their performance earlier today so see uh, where they bring things as uh, time goes forward uh, could be the rise of a new EU team uh, similar beginnings is really what we saw from Blatt or Flat Earth for a while back as well right they were, they were a team that kind of just was was always in tournaments because I've seen Ventus around before they were in tournaments they would come, uh, sometimes get bumped out in round of 16 maybe make it to round of 8 and always get bumped out there not really the team that you'd see in semifinals or finals but like you said the story was kind of similar with Flat Earth until they leveled up leveled up now Flat Earth is our number 3 and one of the best teams uh, in the world in Overwatch so could be seen a similar story the Ventus on the you know following those roster changes and just riding the momentum winning the ESL Community Cup this morning indeed so uh, one thing that it's a little bit uh, unfortunate here uh, I'm adding a uh, new players to my friends list to make the lobby system uh, better but now I've hit the friends list limit and as a result I had to remove random people if I remove you from my friends list it's not because I don't want to be friends with you it's that I am totally tapped out on room so I apologize I'm gonna get Mr. Popular over here well, no, that's the thing. That's why I'm like, I try and be careful about FN because I figured I'd hit the limit at some point. And, you know, it's one thing if you don't add people, they understand. It's like, oh, you know, you have full time. But if you remove someone, that strikes a chord. That really upsets people. Yeah, I, I So would I try imagine. to avoid it when possible, but I'm probably creating enemies left, right, and center. Now. Okay, so what, what did we decide here on as far as what do you want to call the symbols name? Because I'm trying to look at the roster and I can't figure out who that actually is on their roster. I don't know, and I... 
I don't know if there's a good translation. Uh, we might just call it, uh, you know, the Luxury Watch X, like whatever uh, role it's playing for now. Fair enough. So, uh, they're asking us, we are certainly ready. We're ready, ready to get into this EU versus uh, a Korean matchup heading into the first round of our North American Cup. Uh, <laughs> cro- yeah. I, Overwatch just it, it allows for a lot of cross-region play. What can I say? Yeah, and we are on the NA servers for sure. So yep. we have an EU team playing playing Koreans on the NA servers. Uh, you know, maybe something to look at in the future when when server and options open up a little more. But right now, this is what we got. And we're going to Nimbani. If You're my indeed. client loads, let's pray. Yeah, my for, client is also frozen. That, that, that's why uh, you guys are getting the black screen right now. But all right, we're getting back in. Stand by. We uh, try and log back in. I don't know why this happens. It feels like it happens earlier in the day rather than later. Traveling to but uh, we're getting back in on the money. It's just Overwatch getting its bits and bytes and orders. All right, I am back in. Uh, Hex, do you need to invite back in? Uh, my client's just kind of sitting there right now, so hold on. I might just alt-tab and see what happens. So, looking at the team rosters as things uh, set up here, where it's going to be Luxury Watch on the defense first here on Numbani. We got Symmetra on... Or awesome guy on the Symmetra. Mez on the Farah. We have a Zenyatta coming out for Luxury Watch. Fantasy on the Reinhardt. Uh, Pink Medicine on Lucio. And Hidden on the McCree. Yeah, it tossed me an invite back and I'd have restart my client, but I'll be ready for you. I wonder what goes on here where I can get back in the game off the reconnect, but then the game just like locks you out. I wonder what the... What is actually going on there in the Overwatch client? I mean, like but, most things, I just think it's your fault. <laughs> well, a story for another day. Taking a look at the Ventus roster. We got Icefelt on the Tracer, Evo on the Zenyatta, Nevix on the Genji, Mineral on a second Zenyatta, Rib on the Symmetra, and Zebosai. I run things out on Offensive Widow, so we're going to see a double orb comp coming out here from Ventus as they move forward. Uh, Tracer Genji, uh, something that's become very, very standard as time has gone on. Yeah, and Icefelt, of course, a player to watch. Uh, very well known, especially in the German FPS scene as well. It was, uh, you know, Arcane was trying to get him on their roster, but right now he is rocking on Ventus. And yeah, taking a look at Icefeld here, uh, or Zebosai looking for the picks, and he's able to get it! Uh, two picks for Zebosai! Starting out the game, Icefeld uh, getting a pick in the back as well, but Fantasy uh, moving for his Reinhardt, getting uh, two kills, uh, doing some good work as Reinhardt. But the momentum now, uh, perhaps shifting in favor of Ventus very early, uh, really fueled off those picks coming out from Zebosai. Yeah, I mean, just uh, that's how this kind of composition works. Get a couple picks, get a couple picks, more momentum, and this is a very fast first cap. Yeah, it's uh, very, very fast indeed. And uh, Luxury Rock's not going to be able to get back onto the point in time here. And they're just going to have to go back a bit and focus on defending on the streets phase. And just for reference on how early this is, no team has a single ultimate up yet. Not even Symmetra. Of course, Symmetra's ult generation got nerfed a little bit in the last patch, so that's probably more normal than anything else. As I say that, uh, with Nevix now, does get his Dragon Blade up. He's uh, far up, just doing general Genji poking as we usually see. Uh, Icefeld also far up, looking for his opportunity. And uh, we have Winston coming in here. Here comes Dragon Blade out from Nevix. Nevix uh, looking to slice and dice. Hit him with two kills as Reaper, but striking right back is Ventus. Uh, three, four kills now for Ventus. Uh, Mess able to at least take out one remaining person on the Ventus team uh, coming out from Luxury Watch, but Ventus going to win that fight cleanly, and the payload will move on. Yeah, and he actually gets taken out there towards the end by the Symmetra turrets, which very far for it. I mean, the, the offensive Symmetra seems like it's, you know, people only talk about the teleporters, they talk about the shielding she does, but sometimes these turrets can be super sneaky, and we've seen a lot of Symmetras actually put them in very strange spots. A lot of Symmetras even favoring putting them on the ground, which players are not used to looking at and expecting to shoot turrets at. Yeah, definitely not, but Ventus now making very good time, Luxury Watch, and now regrouping. Next up, we do see Awesome Guy being awesome, jumping in as Winston, uh, but he's going to get taken out by Zebosai. I think Zebosai just hit an outright headshot on him. Mez able to take out Rib. Icefeld, though, taking out Rez. Uh, both teams actually getting their shots in here. This is not a clean win by Preventus by any means. The payload is stalled out. Rib and Mineral able to get some kills. Big Medicine taking out the teleporter. And, I mean, it's back and forth on both sides, but re really uh, what we saw there was Ventus getting a bit more off uh, the play of Icefeld and others, and they're going to be forward. Yeah, we got that, uh, the, the Widowmaker wall hacks in effect now, which not only helps Widow because her team vision everywhere, it really helps flankers pick good routes and engagements. Yeah, we see Double Reaper now on the uh, defending side for Luxury Watches. They're trying to do something to bring this In fact, they're going back to the old school yep. meta here of Double Reaper, Double Lucio, uh, 
double Winston. Uh, this brings us way back. We'll see if it has any success against this uh, double orb comp, which is the new meta, as it were. We do see the offensive transitions coming down. Zebosai looking for picks in the back. Nevix able to take out Fantasy. Meanwhile, Icefeld uh, has Lucio in his sights back here. Dragonblade is held from Nevix. He's gotten two kills thus far. Zebo will go down to the Winston in the back, but momentum is still firmly in favor of Ventus as they fight out on the cart here. Uh, Reaper going in for the Death Blossom, and Vest with a triple Death Blossom. Nice stuff coming up from Vest. We can still see Icefeld uh, getting kills in the back, however. Uh, but he's going to have to back out a bit as Luxury Watch going to fully wipe out Ventus there. Yeah, they did lose their loose here towards the end there to another sneaky Symmetra turret under the overhang here. But a great Death Blossom is really going to get let them get their feet under them. Now they have another Death Blossom up as well as a Winston Primal Rage. So some ultimates to work with on defense and they look like they have their feet under them now. Yeah, definitely. And this is, uh, we see this pretty frequently in where, uh, honestly, you have situations Death where... You can keep chaining death bosses back and forth. This is what made this comp so strong in the past, and definitely uh, still has its moments now, even against sort of the new age comps. That being said, Nevix and uh, Icefell combined for two kills each. Uh, four people left now on the Luxury Watch team. If they're going to do something, they need to do it quickly. More kills coming out. That is a full team wipe in favor of Ventus, and they're just going to cap out the map in a relatively unceremonious fashion. So an interesting to see the 222 meta come back in a little bit. It had some effect, of course, just the giant death blossom. All these kind of low health characters die very quickly to it. Um, but it's still not quite the answer to the god comp. This is what I was talking about. These, this turret at the end kills the Reaper, I think. Yeah, the, the turret's actually doing a surprising amount of work here, but that is why Symmetra got play of the game. Uh, well played by Rib going in there, so... The time the beat is 413 and Luxury Watch now uh, under a bit of pressure here on Numbani. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The one thing I will note is look at the levels on Luxury Watch. Apparently, these guys grind pretty hard because those are some pretty high levels, even for people uh, who play a lot. I've seen them in pubs from time to time, too. I think I th I do believe there's Asian servers up for Overwatch now, but uh, they were on the NA servers a lot back in the beginning and still uh, show up from time to time. I actually I'm not entirely sure on this, but I do believe that both the progress is definitely shared between the different servers. That much is 100% sure. But I also believe MMR might be shared as well. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it could also be a thing. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, we'll see what they do on offense, though, because kind of, you know, the offense is, is standard in the meta for double orb. Uh, for the most part, teams are running double orb on offense to get to uh, capture point ones, at least, except on King's Row. King's Row is its own animal right now. Um, but we'll see if they come out. Uh, luxury watch, that is, in the double orb, so-called god comp, which I think I'm going to start referring it to. It, it's, it seems much more fun to say god comp than double orb. Indeed. So... Take a look here as the defense for Ventus now shaping up. We're going to see if they have any switch ups, but actually interesting stuff where you see a return to Soldier 76, a yep. hero that we used to see a lot on this map, but uh, not seeing quite as much anymore as Zebosai going to be on the 76. Mineral on the Mercy, Rib on Lucio, Evo on the Torbjorn, Icefelt on the McCree and Nevix rounding things out on the Symmetra. So. Well, you've seen Soldier 76 kind of be replaced by Junkrat here, and they're going to hold the same area in the same spot. Zebosai is going to break down all these railings. I always just imagine off screen somewhere is a group of workers in hard hats just with a bag of Overwatch railings waiting for the map to end. Every map, these railings take a beating. So they're going to put him up top here. He's going to try to hold the left side while the Reinhardt shield and everyone else goes right. Torbjorn's going to be below. Um, they'll probably damage boost him at some point. And it does look like we have a variation, at least, of the God Comp coming out for Luxury Watch. Pink Medicine and Symbol Name is uh, are going to be playing their Zenyatta's Fantasy will be on the Symmetra. Mez on the Genji. So you do have the double orbs, but they're peppering in Hidden on the 76, and they're going to run a tank as well in Awesome Guy. So a very different variation, but the core is very similar. Uh, very much so. So take a look here. As we see... Luxury Watch on their attack. They do have a uh, very fast time to beat here, so they're going to need to move quickly. Uh, we do have Hidden on the 76. And he's actually just sort of counter-poking there, 76. I do believe Mineral is going to be boosting 76 from time to time. He's certainly doing so right now. And a boosted 76 honestly makes for some of the scariest poke in the entire game. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. You can underestimate it to your own peril. And, uh, you know, if you poke your head out a little bit and then... Eh. Yeah, so uh, not going off the side. Oftentimes, we'll see a teams in the mind try and go up that left side. Uh, Luxury Rock Shell going straight the middle uh, with the Winston. Winston with the Orb. Uh, Winston Orb actually one of the tankier things in the game. Difficult to deal with at times, but not quite that tanky as Evo going to take him out. 
Uh, Mess able to take out the turret, however, so... Not a total loss for Luxury Watch, but right now this is not the decisive push they need. They're actually getting pushed back a bit here. A lot off the Soldier Science to play this other side. Yeah, they might have to try a different angle here. Maybe go to the right side. Of course, you have to deal with uh, Reinhardt and the McCree over there, but it might be a little easier for their Genji to kind of get in on the Reinhardt than it is to try to deal with his damage boost at 76. Yeah, we saw Mez take out Zebo there, and in fact, Mineral just saying, you know what, I'm just gonna res Zebo outright. Zebo, though, going to go down again to Awesome Guy. So, uh, Zebo's side gonna be down for a little bit longer now, no res in sight. Mez is setting up behind as the Genji, so see if he can get A work done here. And here comes Awesome Guy, Awesome Guy jumping in on top of the point, but look at this defense coming out from Ventus. Ventus, uh, very split out in general. Hidden, going to take on the multi-core turret, though, so now Evo is molten core, but without a whole lot of extra going in on it. Icefeld able to take uh, out Zenyatta. Nevix uh, takes out Fantasy, so... While some people are going down the defense here, uh, Icefelt is still able to hold strong uh, behind Rip. Yeah, very split up. Mez is in the back line actually trying to take out Zebo. He pops Dragon. Yeah, the Dragon Blade comes out. He is trying to go in, but no, he's going to get taken out uh, by Reinhardt there. So right now what I'm noticing on the Ventus offense, or on the Luxury Watch offense, is that they are having some issues getting in Coronet all at the same time. We do see Winston going in, but the rest of the team is hanging back a little bit, and it's hurting them a bit. I feel like they need to at least maybe challenge the high ground, change something up here, and that might be what they're doing here, as they looks like they're taking a different approach this time. Oh, and take a look at this. Almost a pickoff for Icefeld. Icefeld uh, had very good shots in the Zenyatta. One more shot would have taken him out. They are gonna just run through the doorway here. They're gonna start up with Mez coming in. Now they have their offensive ultimate. transcendence coming out here from Luxury Watch. They're trying to make the most of it. Oh Mez is gonna get poked out a bit. Uh, Rib and Evo, though, able to get a kill each. That's two people down for Luxury Watch as they move in. Winston or Bernat is going to get DPS down by Icefelt. And that's three kills now for Ventus as a uh, Luxury Watch getting a bit bullied on their attack run right now. Yeah, Rib hit an Earth Shatter that knocked about four down and had his charge up too. Just pushed them right down the staircase. It was brutal to watch. Yeah, Zebozai getting uh, poked out by Zenyatta there is going to get rezzed up again. That is one downside is that when you're sort of 1v6 poking a soldier, sometimes you eat a little bit too much poke. We see Awesome Guy running in on top of Zebozai, um, aided by Mez. Mez getting in there as well. And we see uh, Zenyatta able to take out Mineral, so uh, that is a mercy down now for Ventus. They're going to be down that res, potentially. Uh, Zebozai is going to have to back up a bit. But again, look at the position. The position is really spread out. It's making it very difficult for... Luxury Watch to get the engage that they want right now. Yeah, it's it's kind of something we've seen the last couple of days with Winston, too, that his engagements just have to be so well coordinated in time, but if the rest of the team doesn't get in there right when he needs them in there, then he just dies. Yeah, definitely. So, Luxury Watch now uh, working with a... Not even a minute 30, actually, because you look at the overall timer, they only have 50 seconds left. I think mathematically, they might already be out of it at this point. Because I'm not sure, even if they were to the fully wipe out the Ventus team right now. I don't think you could bring the cart from here all the way to the end in one go. No, so it's a very this is map. almost certainly going to be Ventus's map going forward. A really solid defense coming up from Ventus. Uh, good use of positioning. Good use of Soldier McCree. Just solid in general. And we're going to see if Luxury Watch is going to be able to switch it up a bit going into the next game. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first team we've seen get locked out of, uh, you know, Nibani first point one here. So it's, it's, it doesn't bode that well for them, of course, not being able to take first point. But we've seen excellent top tier EU and NA teams not take first point either. And in fact, teams have actually gotten a lot better at defending first point. I mean, look at IDD QD against any of the other very, very solid teams in the game. IDD QD has made uh, some of the best teams look absolutely foolish with their first point defenses. But if they get past the first point, you actually see IDD QD get pushed back a bit and all the rest. I think there's just teams are getting more comfortable on these first points. So officially, that's it. GG being called. Uh, we're just going to let time run out, see the play of the game, and move on to map number two. So nothing really meta breaking there. Some little kind of uh, off class wrinkling from Luxury Watch, you know, adding the Soldier 76 and the Winston into the double orb, not to the greatest effect, uh, especially there on offense. But also, I mean, I just think Ventus with this new roster lineup they have is going to be a team to watch going forward. And I think that they have a chance to get to semis and finals today. Indeed. So Ventus going up one nothing on the Bonnie. We'll see uh, where Luxury Watch decides to bring things for map number two. Uh, both of the remaining maps are payload. So uh, no uh, weird switch-ups here, no King of, no King of the Hill, uh, no capture points, just a good, solid payload gameplay coming your way. I love watching uh, competitive play of the game McCree's because you actually get to see the left click in action as opposed to pub McCree, ha. Huh? Yeah, Paul McCree, which is fan the hammer until uh, anything goes bad and fan the hammer some more. <laughs> uh, also, I'm just going to note, uh, shout out to the Hamburglar skin. 
I know it's called Mystery Man McCreeb, but oh, yeah, man, if it doesn't look like the Hamburglar. No, I mean, Overwatch is definitely getting its own nomenclature from uh, the community as well. You know, I mean, I've tried so many times to keep calling his ultimate Deadeye, but it's high noon to me. Um, I like calling the Zarya ultimate just Tobolstein because I don't know what she says when she puts it out there, but definitely some cool stuff. And we even saw the introduction of McCreeper yesterday. Yeah, McCreeper. That's actually one of the better memes I think has come out from there. It's just like, hey, you know, it's McCree. He's uh, McCreepin'. But uh, we saw some, I think it was, what was it? It was like r tier, I believe, who just uh, went around the back line and got incredible amounts of value. But uh, we actually see that more often where you wouldn't think it since McCree is very slow, doesn't have the most mobility. But if people are really focused on a specific team fight and McCree can actually find that opportunity to go back around, he can wreak absolute havoc. And not just a dead eye, just straight up left clicking uh, squishy targets. Yeah, uh, especially when you put someone like Icefeld with that aim that he has uh, on McCree, too. It's going to be deadly. So we might see the rise of a new McCree main as most teams uh, have someone who is just their best hero is McCree. They can switch off things, of course, but uh, I'm wondering if that's going to be Icefeld for the newly revamped Ventus roster. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Gibraltar or Hollywood will be our next map. Uh, we are going to Gibraltar. Yeah, I like as, Gibraltar. For some reason, I always think this is as, as Zarya's home, and Zarya recently has been played a lot more because she got buffed up, so maybe we'll see our uh, our giant Russian woman here. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, Zarya, we are seeing a little bit more of her just in general. Uh, the buff's definitely a little bit uh, helpful to her. It does help that, more, more so than anything else, the fact that her left click is more of a threat now, even when she does have energy, because it is a lot harder for her to gain the energy that she used to, just because... Uh, in the past, when you had the four second Zarya shield, it was very easy if you put that on a Genji, a Tracer, a yep. Farah for them to just run into anything and get you 50 energy every time. With a two second shield, it's a little bit rough. Now, you could two second shield yourself and move in, but then you have the threat that, OK, now I'm exposed to Zarya and Zarya. While she has 400 HP, if you go out of your way to take damage, a lot of times you can't actually disengage before the damage actually ends up killing you. So uh, it's a tough road for Zarya at times to get uh, higher energy. So that her curve being evened out a little bit to where she's not as dependent on the energy definitely helps. Yeah, I completely agree with it because with that, the way the energy mechanic works, you're kind of relying on the other team to make mistakes and the higher level you're playing at, uh, the other team can avoid those shields almost entirely. And so raising her baseline damage is hugely important. Mm -hmm. Also cleanses the orb off of your allies now, which is almost its most important feature. And like you mentioned, she's got the lowest HP uh, pool of all the tanks. She's always kind of reminded me of Sonya from Heroes of the Storm. Not necessarily a solo tank, but can play that role somewhat, and also just a bruiser. Does a ton of damage when you get that uh, Ghostbusters beam really going. Yep, so take a look here. Uh, both teams loading into Watchpoint Gibraltar now. It's going to be Ventus on the attack first, uh, Luxury on the defense first, and they're coming back out again with the double Lucio, double Winston, double Reaper from the looks of it. And like I said, this just takes us way, way back. And I mean, there are the benefits that comp. There's a reason why people ran. I mean, double sound barrier is really, really good. Uh, Reaper being able to chain Death Blossoms is great. And Winston is a bit of a threat. But I think just the bigger issue is that people have learned that Genji has his own special kind of power in terms of what he does in the meta right now. Right. So, yeah, this Man. is the meta that we saw for dominate the scene for an entire afternoon. Definitely. So reading off the defense here as we look here, uh, we have a defensive Lucio, we have Fantasy on the Winston, Mez on Reaper, Pink Medicine on Lucio, Awesome Guy on Winston, and Hidden on a Reaper. How apropos that name, Hidden on the Reaper. Uh, offensively, it looks like they are going to be running a variation of the God Comp. Evoke and Mineral will be on the Zenyatas, Icefeld on Tracer, Zebosai is going to come out as the Widowmaker, which is the change-up to this roster, and uh, Rib will be Symmetra and Nevix on Genji. So Genji, Tracer, Zenyatas, the core of it, uh, and then the 6 is usually where you see some of that flexing, and Zebo is going to come out on the Widow for that 6. Yep, so right now we see Zebosai going to be opening up on the Offensive Widow, see uh, if he gets any picks early on here, but really doesn't have that many pick targets. I mean, maybe he can pick Reaper, uh, maybe he picks a Lucio, but the Lucio's gonna be a little bit far back, and the Winston's... Uh, and we'll note, if Widow sh sh starts off with a headshot on Winston, it can actually go out pretty well. Yeah, Winston is not immune. They're all far back. They were all crouched together behind this box, and the Tracer came around and just saw this nebulous blob of Overwatch. Yeah, and in fact, uh, it works out well, uh, at least for the beginning part here, for... Uh, Luxury Watch are able to trade off uh, two for two and stall the card at least for a little bit. Nevix and Devil though, able to get extra kills themselves, and this is going to put the momentum back in favor of Ventus. It started very well for them because not only did they pick off two, but they picked off both Zenyatas, which if you can depower both Zenyatas out of this composition, you're putting yourself in a great position to win fights. 
Yeah, I mean, it definitely hurts the Genji a little bit more than the Tracer. Tracer can still be a pesty one without ore, but Genji is still pretty reliant on that. Not as much now that he has 200 HP back again, but Genji's a lot more comfortable with the orb. We see uh, Ice Belt right now uh, dealing with two Reapers. Uh, has to be very, very careful. Three kills now for the Luxury Watch team as they uh, take control over the top. Good stuff coming out from them, and Ventus gonna have to regroup at least a little bit here. Yeah, they're making We, see, we did see the Dragon Blade come out from the Nevix. Nevix is able to get uh, Pink Messin down at the very least. Uh, fighting Winston right now, but again, has to be careful. Uh, Genji... Uh, Back in the day, uh, before Winston got nerfed, uh, used to have some degree of issues with Winston, particularly before orbing the Genji became uh, super, super commonplace. Yeah, so Riv has his teleport up. We're going to see how aggressive he wants to place it. Sometimes we try to get in this room. That's exactly where he's headed now, is to pack room. Yeah, actually looking here, we have uh, both Icefeld and Nevex going very far in, uh, utilizing the aggressiveness of Genji and Tracer to their maximum. Uh, really fighting almost 2v4, 2v5 here. Icefeld able to take out Awesome Guy. Uh, Fancy does get in the back line, takes out Evo, but we do have a brawl on top of the payload here as Nevex uh, trying to take these people out bit by bit. And Rib, in fact, with the double kill. So uh, nice stuff coming out there. Rib with a triple kill as Symmetra. Uh, more in the back as we see uh, Genji and Tracer moving forward, and that is going to be the start of the hangar phase next. Yeah, Hangar Phase is uh, really interesting to watch, especially trying to see who takes the high ground, if players take the high ground. Now, the, the defense has a lot of mobility characters that can deny that high ground as well. We'll see if Tracer or Genji tries to get up there too, but I think that's where we're going to see a lot of fights on top of this shuttle. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, looking at things as they move forward here, we have... Again, uh, Ventus pushing very far up. That is the, I think that's the biggest power of this composition and all the various forms we see is that people can push far up. That makes sense. Here comes Luxury Watch. They are diving in. They're not wasting any time. Uh, defensive Sound Barrier comes out as they move forward. They're going to start putting some pressure on the back lines and Yana's. That's two kills now in favor of Ventus. Taking a look at Zebo side. Zebo side on the Lucio in the back. Uh, having to go back for his life uh, when Primal Rage is out. And so far, this fight going in favor of Luxury Watch. That being said, Mineral and Icefeld able to turn it back around. Two kills for them. Uh, Ventus not giving up just yet in the middle of this fight. Uh, three kills uh, going back the other way for Ventus. But as you can see uh, what Icefeld and Nevix are able to do, they're still alive here. And Genji Trace are still alive. There's still power. Yeah, and he's also still got the orb as well as some ultimates up for this team. A pulse bomb could ruin someone's day, but they're not even going to need it right now as they get in and just get kills just with their basics. Yeah, Icefell and Nevix, the thing is, a lot of the backline is dying to these dives from Luxury Watch, but even depowered without the orb, Icefell and Nevix are able to stay around, keep presence on the cart, keep pushing people back, and in the end, the payload moves forward in favor of Ventus, so really nice stuff coming up there. Uh, Rib takes out Winston in the back, and now uh, Nev Nevix and Icefell just feeling very comfortable in the enemy backline. Yeah, hunting and depowering the orb and using the Zen is more important in a mirror match. Yep, uh, we do have an offensive transcendence coming out that's going to let Ventus push up even more right now. Uh, Dragon Blade coming out from Nevix. Nevix uh, on the hunt, takes out a Lucio going further in, uh, has uh, another Winston in his sight. Of what Winston was orb is going to get taken out. Icefeld already deep in the enemy backline, takes out Mess. And again, we just see this relentless momentum coming out from this double orb comp, and we've seen it time and time again from many, many a team now. Yeah, it's so many kills. Now, this comp does lose a little bit of power trying to push in a last as they're not able to get in behind and there's not so many oh. flanks, so maybe last can be held a little bit here by Luxury Watch. I do think Luxury wa Watch is due for a turn out here. They have a lot of ultimates up. The defensive trap sound coming out. They have one uh, Death Blossom out. Mez get the double kill. A second Death Blossom coming out. Uh, doesn't kill anyone just yet, but certainly does a lot of damage. And this is going to push the offense of Ventus way far back. But the one thing of note here, uh, as Fancy picks up the double kill, is that... That's a lot of ultimates used for that. They had to basically blow everything, save for one Primal Rage. They're not going to have uh, Sound Bears from next final likelihood. They're not going to have Death Blossoms. So, yes, they're able to push back Ventus here, but it did come at a heavy cost. Yeah, it's a situation where you wonder if it's maybe a little overblown there, maybe a little too much usage could have staggered some of those ultimates and kept some in your pocket as you're on defense here. Uh, but I think they just wanted to make sure they won the fight. It's, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I do think they kind of need to use a lot of those ultimates there. If they were missing a Death Blossom, I don't know if that goes quite as cleanly. Missing a Sound Barrier, same deal. So they're going to have to defend this. Uh, both teams out without a whole lot of ults going into this. We do have a post bomb from Icefeld. We've seen that do a lot of work, especially when attached to a Winston. Defensive Sound Barrier actually comes back up, though, for Luxury Watches and move in. Uh, three kills for them now as they move forward, and they're able to make most of it uh, even without the most of ult. Zebosai actually winning some of these Reaper v. Reaper battles, though, picking up two kills. But overall, momentum still in favor of Luxury Watch as they defend here. Wow, that's a couple kills, though, from the Reaper, and then Icefeld adds onto that as well, so only three up now for Zebosai Luxury Watch. 
yeah, Zebosai able to keep it in. Uh, no one actually took him out and all that. In fact, uh, Zebosai making the most work of his Reaper, and he has a Death Blossom to top things off as well. So now Ventus with a great opportunity to move in here. They're not going to have to deal with much of anything on the defensive alt end, though. I do think those alts will be back up soon. They're going to have to go one fight out. And here comes the Death Blossom from Zebosai. He gets pushed back a bit. Only takes out one Lucio start, but uh, with the cleanup on the Hellfire Shotguns, makes it a triple kill in the end. And Ventus going to roll forward to a pretty quick watch point Gibraltar time. Yeah, a couple late switches there on Zarya's coming down from Luxury Watch. I'm not entirely sure what the thinking was there. Maybe remove some of the discords, but Fantasy switch. And Fantasy was uh, doing very well on Winston that game. When he get kills, he was generally two and three kills at a time. So a player to watch as we move forward on their side of the map. Yeah, definitely. Die, die, die. And this is actually play the game for Zen. It's like a good pushback by Lucio, but because everyone felt compelled to go back into Zebo's side, he was just able to left click, left click, and uh, add on the kills that he didn't get with the initial ultimate. Yeah, and that was that weird font bug you saw towards the end there with uh, the characters just increase in size somehow when, when symbols are used as your name. Indeed. So, think of this uh, the time to beat for Luxury Watch is going to be 6.05. We're going to see if they have the ability to do that uh, pretty soon. That's pretty uh, it's a more beatable time than what happened on the Bonnie, if nothing else. I yeah. mean, we have seen people put on gems of the Bonnie games and get through. Uh, it won't necessarily be easy, but it is at least in theory a beatable time. Yeah, six of five is a time that you know, it, it might affect how the defense plays here too. You could see some more static defense, uh, things like that, to just kind of stall it out. Because if you stall out a couple points here, uh, then you're probably going to be able to prevent the team from finishing in six. A medium time on the on the faster side of things, a little bit. Definitely. Okay, so we're going to see so, if Luxury Watch can bring this back in a time faster than six minutes or their short-lived tournament life will be coming to an end. Uh, no shame losing to Ventus, though. Like I said, I want to watch Ventus a lot today. It's going to be interesting to see as they move through the brackets and, you know, as these brackets shape down, it's just going to be great team versus great team throughout the day. Yeah, and actually a good adjustment for Ventus dealing with uh, some meta stuff that we haven't seen in a while. I do think the advantage of the 2-2-2 two, two, two comp is that you do have very, very strong uh, pushes when you have your ultimates up. It's difficult to deal with two Death Blossoms. It's difficult to deal with two Raging Monkeys, and it's especially difficult to deal with two Sound Barriers. But I do think that composition does have a bit of issue when all those uh, ultimates are down. So take a look at the defense now coming out for the Ventus side. We're going to have Ice Felt on the McCree, Evo on the Lucio Mineral, on the Zenyatta, Zebosai on Reaper, Nevix on Genji, and Rib rounding things out on the Reinhardt. Yeah, offensively, we are going to have a variation of the God comp, as it were. Player 1, which is what I'm calling the symbols now, Player 1 on Luxury Watch will be playing a Zen, as is Pink Medicine. Fantasy will be on that Symmetra, Mez on Genji. They're also going to roll an offensive Reaper played by Hidden, and Awesome Guy will be on Winston. So definitely favoring Winston is the thing I'm taking away from this Korean meta. Yeah, and Winston, I mean, there's still points uh, where NA teams will play him as well. He's just a little bit more situational now since getting those nerfs. He did get a slight buff to his jump pack in the last patch, but he hasn't really become a mainstay, especially with what we've been seeing recently. But 6.05 is the time of the clock. That timer will start rolling. Let's take a look at Hidden here. This in looks for some early picks on the Ventus side. And what a deflect. Uh, it was a good shot, but immediately deflected out, so... Hidden uh, looking for some value, and in fact, we see Ventus holding at a somewhat similar place to where we saw Luxury Watch holding just in the last round. Yeah, and I think they're just kind of waiting for Hidden to do something here. It definitely were, as they were not even uh, leaving spawn, really, before Hidden got a couple shots off. Yeah, but if you look at how Ventus is positioning here, they're positioning in such a way that they're making this very, very rough for the Luxury Watch side. Taking a look at Mez here. Uh, the payload is moving at the very least. It looks like they're going to be trying to defend more on the archway. Uh, just really focusing on not giving up free picks. That being said, we do have uh, Zebosai getting caught in the back here. Uh, has a Genji on him, has a uh, Winston on him. He's going to go down for first blood. So, a kind of bloodless start to this, but Luxury Watch is moving the cart reasonably fast, and uh, Ventus... Uh, their defense really just, I guess, holding back at a uh, more defensible spot. Yeah, Zebo went in there pretty deep for a pick, and then we saw a couple other people retreat, clearly called out on comms, they went back and dealt with oh, them, and, and then everyone else just left the high ground. Yeah, take a look there, Nevix on defensive Genji is able to get in onto Hidden. Uh, we do have Mez on the offensive Genji, spamming out a bit, and now this is the really hard part for teams uh, on the attack, getting through this point and starting the hangar phase. This is a much more defensive... A favored area. It can be very tough for teams. We see teams get stuck here all the time. Uh, really, just the next two areas, it can be rough in general for the offense. So, taking a look as Luxury Watch comes back in. 
Uh, Mez has both orbs on both Harmony and Discord alike. Goes deep into the enemy team. Meanwhile, we see Nevix going deep into the Luxury Watch side of things, but has to back out. Winston getting in on him. Uh, Icefell and Zebo with a pair of kills in the back, however, but Nevix gonna go down. Yeah, but the cart is far enough here that they were able to drop down an offensive teleporter. They need to hold that area. That teleporter goes down and actually resets their whole offensive push, but they do pop ultimates out of that telly. They're trying to get this uh, second point. Yep, uh, meanwhile, we do have a, a Dragon Blade coming out from Mess. Mess looking to get some value here. Going to backline, is able to take out Rib. This is two kills now for Luxury Watch, but look at that. Zebosai able to take him out, but hey, uh, one of the Zenyatas on point takes out Zebosai, and Luxury Watch uh, making some decent time here as they start the hangar phase. Yeah, a little less than four minutes left to finish this map out completely and uh, force us into a map three. The shuttle can be uh, a very interesting area. I think they have the tools to really dominate this stage of the map, though. Yeah, they definitely do. So uh, we do have Hidden uh, still in the Widowmaker, still looking for those picks. And uh, Ventus, I think their defense has been a little bit disorganized. And look at that, Hidden able to take out Icefeld, but Zebo striking right back with a counter snipe. So that's uh, one down for both sides here. But uh, the important thing is Zebo's free to go about, and he's going to pick off another. He's looking for a third. Can he get the Zenyatta to finish it out? Uh, Zenyatta now under a bit of pressure, but Zebo getting a bit greedy. Jumps down, gets slowed by the turrets, and gets taken out. Uh, greed makes feed, as it were. It's still a thing, even in an FPS game. Awesome guy is doing a ton of work on this yeah. win, so he is all over the place, just uh, his positioning He's on his He's very phenomenal. far deep, like, that, Mez and uh, Awesome Guy have been very far deep for most of this, and they've been pushing Ventus back, so looking at the time here, uh, Ventus now actually a bit in danger of losing this map, as Luxury Walk still has three minutes to go forward, and they've been making great time here. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the first time I've really seen Winston uh, played a, to full effect using his new buff of that cooldown on his leap being lowered because he's jumping all over the place. He made a ton of space there with this Primal yep. Rage that allows him to cap the point. They have two and yeah, a half right. minutes left. And the interesting thing here, too, is that we've seen, seen the fights really going uh, from varied locations. They had fights going all the way back to the beginning of the hangar as fights were fighting on top of the payload. So uh, very split out here for both teams. For those who are uh, wondering, so taking a look here as uh, Luxury Watch moves forward, Ventus now in a bit of trouble. They have to hold this for 2 minutes, 20 seconds, and I mean, it's possible to do it here, but the momentum has very much been in favor of Luxury Watch, so let's see what they do going forward. We do see Zebosai able to take out Mez. That is a big pick. Mez has been doing a lot of work in the backfield so far, and we're going to see now if we're going to have a uh, collapse, perhaps, coming out from Ventus. And there it is, Icefeld able to get into backline, picks off two kills, Zebo with another kill onto player one, as it were, Mineral takes out Awesome Guy, and this is going to be a full wipe in favor of Ventus. Yeah, really good work there, and they didn't even have to use any ultimates to do it. Now look at their position they're in for ultimates, Pulse Bomb is still up, Transcendence is up, they have a Dragon Blade ready to go, they're in a great spot on defense to be able to hold this for the next 90 or so seconds. They definitely are, so... This is a case now where Luxury Watch, they do have some time, but they don't have all the time in the world. They have about time for two pushes, so they need to make something happen here, but that's not going to happen to Icefell and Zebosai. Combined for three kills early, uh, Icefell going absolutely nutty in the back, uh, looking for a kill on Mez to round up the set, does get Mez. And uh, this is right now is the Icefell showing this push, as he's uh, taking out the vast majority of the Luxury Watch team. Wow. Yeah, he takes out... his post bomb. Take out both supports and a Widow to start He's gonna throw the a post bomb into the spawn, doesn't get the kill. Nevix and Heisfeld, though, literally right by the spawn door, uh, creating a bit of havoc for the Luxury Watch team. And now, they did have a bit of a time buffer, but they only have one minute left now, so they pretty much have to wipe out the Ventus team and keep rolling if they want to stay alive in this tournament. They're not really going to have the ultimates to work with as they did switch up heroes. They brought out a McCree to possibly deal with Icefeld's Tracer and they're running Fantasy as well, so they can try to get hit. Oh, look at Icefeld. Icefeld getting right back on the hit, not wanting to deal with it with the aid of Nevix. Nevix and Icefeld both in the back. Uh, we see the Dragon Blade coming out from Nevix. They're going for the throat here. Nevix with two, three kills so far uh, going in here is going to potentially get the Reinhardt as well. And now looking at the time, this might be GG because I don't think they can bring the payload there in 30 seconds. Maybe mathematically it's possible, but they would also have to wipe out the entirety of the Ventus team, and I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, the roster change is really working out so far for Ventus as we move th forward in this tournament. Nevix used to be the one who used to off-class onto Widow. Now he, he opens that role up for Zebosai to be on that. Icefell doing crazy work as Tracer. This is a brand new Ventus, and it shows. Yeah, Ventus looking good, although I do think they looked a little bit uh, discombobulated on their Gibraltar defense for the first two points. I... You know, Luxury Watch definitely took advantage of that and not take it away from them, but Ventus uh, looked like they didn't really hit their groove until this last point. So, you know, if you're playing Ventus now in the future, maybe you want to take them to Gibraltar because 
I would want to play them in Gibraltar right now, but you know, I'm looking at the team. I feel like, okay, this is potentially doable. Yeah, if you can just sort out your final push against them, you should be in pretty good order as they were just absolutely rolled through in the shuttle stage. Yeah, but uh, shout out to Luxury Watch. They also played that part really, really well. Uh, GG's being called now from both teams. We will see Ventus move on to our round of eight. And Luxury Watch going to go down, but honestly, a pretty good showing from them coming out on Gibraltar. And who knows how ping is affecting them as well. I actually have no idea what sort of pings they are dealing with. I know that, of course, on NA servers, uh, the EU set of things isn't dealing with perfect pings either, but I'm guessing that the ping from Korea to the US is worse than EU to the US in most cases, but I don't really know. I guess it would depend if it was West Coast or East Coast. Yeah, one thing that I really learned that game, the two, is it's just like Winston is totally viable in the shuttle phase of the game. The way he used the geography of the map to jump to the shuttle, to jump back, to get to the back lines. Awesome guy, went absolutely nuts, and he deserves his play of the game, whatever it is. Definitely. So, cool stuff uh, coming from Awesome Guy, and uh, this is. Actually, if you play the game, you don't see the red coming up from Winston. You see it on the spectator point of view, which is why you get all the, you know, baby rages and what faces uh, when we watch a Winston going crazy, but uh, not as much red flashing there. But regardless, good stuff coming from Fentus. They're going to move on, and, you know, honestly, I think there's a future for uh, Korean Overwatch. Yeah, they look pretty good. I mean, like I, like I said, it's not your typical round of 16 loss to some team that just threw together a roster mm -hmm. towards the end. That is Ventus, who is uh, now on a five-game winning streak for just today only, having recently beaten Reunited in the ESL tournament earlier today. So Ventus has definitely leveled up, and they still had a pretty decent showing against them. So, you know, even playing with unideal pings, playing interesting compositions, and really, uh, their, their Winston was so cool to watch. So definitely keep an eye out for Luxury Watch in the future. Yep, so before we take a quick break as we go into our round of eight, we are going to try to bring you Prime vs. Mix-Up. We're going to get an update on where all that stands, but we'd be remiss if we didn't mention our Matcharino page where we got some very generous donations in the uh, interim of the last game. Uh, notably, Wizard Grimm saying, thanks for all the weekend entertainment, guys. Good luck to all the teams today. Thank you, Wizard Grimm, with a donation of $25 plus our coupon code. Totally drunk uh, with $5 plus our coupon code saying, lots of teams on the rise of the late. Time for some to step up. I couldn't agree more. And uh, Jinska saying, who can win with no IDDQD should be a fantastic tournament. Thank you, ZP and Hex, for casting, making Overwatch great. <laughs> and then again, in uh, parentheses, we'll, we'll just leave that one as it is. But uh, thank you so much, guys. It means a lot. Uh, that being said, this is Ghost Gamers Overwatch Weekly NA Cup, and we'll be back in just a moment with the round of eight. Stay tuned. 